Alex asked me right before I hit record, what are we talking about again? That's the type of energy we're bringing into this episode. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of June 9th. (laughs) Wink. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting digitally across from me through the internet. As always, Alex, how are you? I just got why you winked. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. I had to look down at the bottom corner of my computer where it shows the date, and I'm like... Um, nice. Yeah. Aside from the date, Alex, how mm. are you? Good. Better than I was yesterday. That's good. You did have a rough start yesterday. You had a, mm. you had a router issue. Luckily, you were able to fix not mm. only your router issue, but you did, unfortunately... Replace the system. Rest in peace. I think, I think this is how you do it when Catholicism. Like a cross. And no You'd have to... to yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you did have to put down a PS5. Oh my god! Unfortunately, it, it, I didn't have to put it down. It it's it was put down. And Some I say find it that way as an act of God. Your PS5 was taken down. Ugh, you could say that stones. now. You could say an act of God killed your system. Mm. Mother Alex. Nature did not want me to keep one. Mm-hmm. Now, luckily. In this, first off, huge lightning storm. It was crazy. Oh, it was one of those. Sure, it was yeah. one of those where it did just kind of come out of nowhere. I, mm-hmm. The achievers, you know, I know you're like, why didn't you unplug it? It kind of came out of nowhere. To be fair, yeah, yeah, for sure, it was dude. very quick. It, I was just sitting there playing a video game. I think I was off, to, and to I fair, just hear. Yeah, and I'm and like, to be fair, the systems aren't my first thing I think about when there's a lightning storm. I have like four animals and a baby, mm. so. And it's I, the, the first thing a, I think about. <laughs> yeah, it's the. It's I don't the have any of those first, uh, big thunderstorm. So, mm. but luckily everything was replaced. Warranties on everything. Mm. Router was not your problem. It's Comcast's problem. So, <laughs> yep, I'd be like, hey, it fried, and literally they're like, just give me it. And I was like, oh, you know what's happening? And he's like, yeah, you're number nineteen of the day. Oh, I was like, yeah. oh, oh okay. my god, that's a neighborhood right there. Mm-hmm. Alex, what's up? Last episode was E3 focused. We did a lot of predictions. That is now live. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to go check that out on youtube.com slash easy achievers. It's not really that. I just say that. Really just search easy achievers. You'll find it. Um, and a podcast service of your choice, of course. That was all the predictions. Everything we go through, every studio, every major one. Now, we did leave one out. You could say purposefully, and that's what I'm going to pretend it was. I, I'm going to pretend like we did it on purpose. Uh, to do a nice segue into this episode. So to give you a little insight on what we did, we looked through each developer and major publisher and thought of what we think to, and, and what we thought about them. What you think they would bring to the table and stuff. We did leave out EA in that episode. So I want to bring up really quickly EA. <clears throat> and then if you're interested in our conversation, you can then go over to the other video. Alex, EA. Mm. Three games we know about, right? Yep. Dragon Age 4, Mass Effect 4, and Skate. Those are the three major players, I would say. Of course, we did just get Battlefield news, so that's mm-hmm. kind of cheating. We're going to wait on that. We're going to cover that in a second, so I don't even want to touch on that. Touch that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I did have a prediction that Battlefield 6, um, that, as we know now, is 2042. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Will come to Game Pass. We now know my original prediction was correct that it would be shown at the Xbox conference. I'm not really going to take credit for that because I, f- I feel like it was kind of obvious. Call of Duty is with oh, yeah. PlayStation. I'm not, Battlefield's going to go to Xbox. So I'm not, I'm not going to take credit for that. What's up? I wouldn't be surprised if it stays exclusive to Game Pass. I don't think it will, but it won't. I'd, I'd, I'd be crazy. It won't. It would be impressive, but it won't. It will be yeah. on... I think it's already conf- it's already confirmed for PlayStation. For PlayStation, right. so, yeah. So, the SKU's already live, so we know it's not. But I know it's going to be for Game Pass. I'm pretty p- positive. I'll look like a jackass when I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it, it is. <laughs> um, I think we will see Mass Effect and Dragon Age in the sense of CG trailers and nothing mm-hmm. much else. We might see some tiny bit of gameplay from Dragon Age. I don't I think, think we'll, we'll see get much. the what actual. Think? I think we'll get the actual title for Mass Effect because all it said mm. last time it says that Mass Effect will continue. That is not okay. a title. Okay. I assume we will get maybe about the same what we got last time. It's just uh, we'll just get the title with it and possibly a release window. 
Maybe. I think there's a chance we get a release window for Dragon Age. Um, yeah, that no, one. No yeah. chance for anything else. Not Skate. Not. Uh, I think mm-hmm. I think they're leaning on Battlefield this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if they have some sort of small studio sized indie, a la like Child of Light or something. Like they bring up like, hey, this this is happening too, but mm-hmm. I don't know. They have their own thing called EA Play later, so I mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't even know what the show is going to be about if I'm being honest, but we'll see. That's all I really have, though. It was really just Dragon Age 4, Mass Effect. I think we don't see much of them. I think they just show a little bit on their thing. That's it. But. Now. Oh, go ahead. Because they used to be an EA IP, do you want want to make it a segue real quick? I think you know what I'm talking about. I do. Great segue. I appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you liked what we just talked about, of course, we have that whole, like I said, E3 Predictions podcast you can go listen to right now. Speaking of a, there is a slight. We do we do a thing called rumor roundup where we do kind of quick rumors to quickly go through, and I guess this is happening. I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. if it is. Um, uh, comicbook.com got a um, quote from not not even a quote. It was a tweet from this gentleman. Um, Alex, can you get the specific wording of that tweet, please? Uh, I don't have it on hand, but essentially what it was is this guy essentially heavily hints that Dead Space is getting a remaster. I would not be surprised, only in the fact that in the earnings call that EA gave, um, in their last earnings call, they said they were going to lean in heavily to remasters. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if we even see a Dragon Age remaster soon, either. I I think those are definite coming. De- Dead Space is the iffy one for me. It seems pretty certain because this guy, it'd be kind of weird if this guy was doing this and it's not real. It'd be kind of a dick move. So I don't, I'm pretty sure it's real. What do you think, Alex? Oh, I'm honestly, I'd love it to come back. I mean, I did enjoy those. So I, mm-hmm. I, I really hope it would. Um, the, the, uh, are you talking about the tweet? Is that yes. what you want? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me the ex- exact tweeting for the achievers? Yes. So Nick uh, says, I think his name on here is, is, is Shrepshow Nick. Um, his name is Nick Baker. Okay. Uh, it says, you know, the more I've been thinking about it, the more I think Dead Space has a chance of coming back in some way, whether via remasters or a sequel, or hopefully both. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. We'll see. Where... Hopefully. I think hopefully. it's real, but um, this is I a quick so one right here. Um, this is by Deep Sleep Silver via Coke Media. And there's a couple things here. Uh, so, uh, Deep Silver has a lot of IP, and we're, we're going to really quickly go this. So, Coke Media is doing this thing this year that shows off a bunch of games. They made this tweet to verify, like, hey, these games aren't going to be here. So, this is uh, straight from them. They're making an announcement as part of Summer Game Fest on June 11th, which, as of recording, is tomorrow. Um, to give you a heads up, you will not see these following video games. Dead Island, Saints Row, Metro... Or time splitters there or at any other e3 2021 <clears throat> not shocking <laughs> i think alex dead island yeah. is i feel like that's dead as much as i am sad to say it i think it's dead so dead island i was gonna try and say like for lack of a better word is dead i i wouldn't be surprised if they're trying to cobble something together right now but mm-hmm. i mean i don't even fully believe dead island how do i word i don't even fully believe dead island 2 is still being made as in the game Mm -hmm. that was announced i am assuming none of that game is in what whatever is being made right now i think this is a brand new whatever there was something made before yeah i agree yeah it, it, it was on 360 when they showed it off or mm-hmm. whatever and they showed the gameplay and all that stuff but i think that's all i think all that's gone yeah no so that's all gone we'll see whenever they do saints row is a interesting one where mm-hmm. i wouldn't have actually been surprised if we got something saints row this year but clearly we're not going to so yeah. uh, but there was rumors that they were gonna have a like coastal ish city kind of like san francisco 
where like mm-hmm. they go back to like the roots of Saints Row, where it's like a gang again. There yeah. was another rumor that you were gonna that the main characters of Saints Row Four are now bad guys. So like, mm-hmm. so like now you go fight them. Interesting. It, it, I don't know what's real, but no surprise that it's not gonna be there. Metro, yeah. I'm not shocked. It, it that's still kind of fresh, and that studio is probably very busy with whatever they're doing next. Probably another Metro, and mm-hmm. then Time Splitters. I haven't heard the word time splitters in forever. So like I, I that was kind of random that they said that, but I guess they announced the time splitters game. Did they, Alex? I honestly don't keep up with time splitters, so I haven't even heard that word until we were talking about it. Oh really? You've never have you you've never played the time splitters game? I don't think so. Let me see. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Let yeah, so time, time oh, wait, wait, what? Time splitters. Yes, I have yeah, never so... played this game. Yeah, they so it looks like they are achievers. Sorry if you hear. Uh, yeah, so it looks like they are making another time splitters. Um, they're reforming f- for new time splitters. So yeah, they they are making a new game. Okay, I'm indifferent. I don't remember even playing that game. I I played it. I just barely remember the game. I for sure played it though. More interesting new al- news, Alex. Um, so Xbox is getting a new AMD tech that could improve frame rate and resolution even more. So this is coming straight from AMD, which the competitor's version of this is called NVIDIA DLSS. Mm-hmm. And they are utilizing this new AMD service, and it's a super sampling tech. You've yes. heard that. That is what they use in the PS4 Pro. They were mm-hmm. super sampling to get to 4K and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, DLSS is actually being used on PC right now for certain games. Yeah, I know DL. I knew I know DLSS mainly from just hearing it a lot. The frame it's for like frame aids and things like that. Yeah, you're right. Um, and I'm just gonna read a quick quote from a Microsoft spokesperson. Well, at Xbox, we're excited by the potential of AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution technology as another great method for developers to increase frame rate and resolution. We will have more to share soon. Not much there, but I thought it was at least worthy enough to do a quick bring up at the very beginning of the show. It, it, it's kind of exciting, right, Alex? I'm kind of excited for that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's exciting to, to, like, you know, you never know what they could do with it. Because you never know, like, they'll be like, oh, let's try this. Let's see how we can work this into certain games or equipment, you know? The frame rate is what I'm vastly excited for. I especially want... Sure. I want FPS boosts to be bigger of a thing. That um, I, want I think that for like every game. I, I think that's a very a very unique thing Microsoft is bringing to the table, where mm. no other competitor is even kind of doing, where they're just upping old games because they can. That like it's almost like an engineering flex that like yeah we could just take over this old and no developer needs to touch the game. It just we do something and it and it turns it on. It's just it's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. Now, we mentioned it before, Alex. Battlefield 2042 was announced actually today, in yes, a very early morning today. And a bit of a bit of a conundrum on Twitter. I'm not going to lie to you guys, Achievers. It's, it's a lot of hubbub. And Alex, I think, has a, an interesting point of view on this, where I think the Achievers already know where I'm coming from. But I want to give full context, and then we'll dive into our thoughts, Alex. Mm-hmm. Battlefield 2042 will focus on its multiplayer. Now, there will be no campaign. There will be no Battle Royale. No campaign. No Battle Royale. Before we get into that, I wanted to give a couple um, design choices and, and like actual things about the game. So they're supporting 128 players on PC, PS5, and Series S and X. Well, PS4 and Xbox versions of this game will support 64 players. Um, and there's some op- options of, of course, playing solo with squads, and then you could just fight AI bots, apparently. So there is some sort of, I'm not even going to say offline, because I bet you still mm-hmm. have to be o- online to play that, but there is some sure. sort of fun- functionality where you can still play by yourself, in quotes. Yeah. So that reminds me of like the Timefall thing. Remember the Timefall one? Yes, I def- it definitely reminds me of that. Now, this is a quote from Eurogamer that they got. Well, I think that's just something that enables us to really lean in to what we are best at, end quote. And this is from the design director, Dan, uh, Daniel Berlin. Um, and this is he's being asked about essentially why is there no single player in the game? Uh, and it's been in the game since Battlefield 3. So this is technically the first Battlefield ever to mm-hmm. not have a, 
uh, a campaign since campaign, three, yeah. because <clears throat> night. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, and they said, if uh, quote, if you look at the DNA of the studio, what we've been doing for so long, we just said, you know what, we're not going to have a traditional single player campaign this time around, but we're going to put all that emphasis and all that resources into building depth into the multiplayer, because that is what we do best. End quote. Alex, I think that's all we need from all of the hubbub that's been talked about. Mm-hmm. That I think gives proper context. There are a bunch of things like it has like dynamic weathering where like there's like tornadoes and things. There's uh destructible kind of environment things. Mm-hmm. There's the crazy battlefield over the top campy kind of thing you could do with vehicles and things, things again. There's a bunch of yeah. other bullet points you can attach to this, but essentially it's it looks like Battlefield 4 again. Yeah. But I want to talk about this. No single player. Yep. No battle royale. Yep. 60 bucks on Xbox One, PS4, $70 on PS5, mm, and series Xbox X. Series S and X. Yep. What do you think of that? I mean, that's what they, it's next gen. Mm. Now, are you disappointed? No. I mean, no. I'm I'm when we at this point with new with the, with this new gen, mm. I've I'm expected to like I already know I'm gonna pay more. Mm-hmm. So I'm I mean, we've been playing we've been paying yes, yeah, sixty bucks for like the longest time. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I mean that's not bad price for the game for what we get in those yeah. a lot of games. Are you I mean, at games all upset be... about no single player? At first, uh single player a little bit because I always enjoy the campaigns. Mm-hmm. The last two, I didn't care. Mm. But I did enjoy three and four. I just like the more I linear aspect of it and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I just I like them. You know, it gives me time to say like if I don't want to fight people online right now, like I can pause it. I can take my time with it. That's the only issue because I like sometimes taking like my time with with certain games. Mm. Like that's why I like the campaigns of Call of Duty because I can pause it and or if I want to play online, I'll play online. Mm. But with this one, I I have to see how it feels because. The last time they did this was Battlefield 1942. Mm. So it was mm. only online. I mean, that's all they had. Was, and I mean, it was fun, but it was tight. One of those games where, like, you know, play a couple matches for the, the day and then you're done. So, like, I couldn't really play that game for hours and hours. <sighs> Alex, I there's been a lot of hubbub about it has no single player, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. Like, they feel like they're losing value. It's one of those interesting things when you talk about value in the sense, right? Mm-hmm. We've been having this conversation since 2013 at the, at, and that's been conservative. We've been having this conversation since Overwatch launched mm-hmm. on is mm-hmm. multiplayer enough to pay $60 for? Uh, clearly, Overwatch is a major success. That's mm-hmm. enough for people to buy. And Overwatch yep. was literally one game mode back then. Literally, you played quick play and that was it. It literally depends on the support they give this game. It depends on the support. Now, I understand if you have issues with the battle passes, that's a completely different conversation. Mm-hmm. It, I, I do feel a little strange out of the gate, which I feel like Destiny was really good at this. Mm-hmm. Out of the gate, paying 60 bucks and then immediately going, well, you gotta, you know, you gotta pay for the battle pass, of course. Yeah. Maybe, you know, that first month you get it free or whatever. But that's like the biggest like eh. and even then i'm like i i don't really care mm-hmm. um what's almost been bigger if not bigger which is surprised to me everyone was uh, was kind of taken aback by there was no battle royale and i was honestly very confused why anyone wanted this in the game we I mean, have they, so many battle royales so many. first I mean, off it's like- and then second off they've made one they it was had, called yeah, Firestorm, to... and it was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. Literally, honestly, I feel like they're going to look at it, and they'll be like, hey, should we put a Battle Royale in this? And they looked at it, and they're like, you saw the last one? No. And we're not going to compete with Warzone. Warzone is great. It's free to play. Are we going to make it free to play? I don't think so. So we're like, that, not even going to worry about point. it. That's a great point. And I'm not saying they never will. They might, they might after later, a year, you know? six months, come out with yeah. some... To be frank, tacked on kind of battle royale thing. Mm-hmm. May, they're gonna try and do the warzone thing. Now the issue is, and I say this all the time with this, even when before this was even announced, when they put a battle royale in this battlefield game, they are mm-hmm. literally competing with their self. 
-hmm. they are competing with apex either you can you know you could say like it's different games or stuff you're competing for time from players and honestly apex and battlefield i feel like has a pretty shared player base Mm -hmm. honestly i feel like the they said no battle royale but like just the way they describe the multiplayer i feel like it is a battle royale itself because you can have 128 players Mm -hmm. in one single map so imagine remember the war zone in halo 5 i think it was yes the big open area i love that that. no one liked it but but i think yeah i I think that you know that is probably what this is going to be but this is going to be like like crazier because it's a whole they have all the resources to put into being a huge map mm. battlefield is always known for being a huge map mm-hmm. so i feel like they're gonna do the you know oh bring the maps from all the battlefields in and you you, you like what they did you know with a uh, call of duty you have all the front wall call of duty you have it in one map and you can see everything mm-hmm. i feel like that's what they're gonna do and they're gonna just do all that but i think it's a battle royale in itself but just with and it's an evolved form of it, so they don't want to call it a battle royale. Mm. I see what you mean. There is a vein of battle royale in this giant mm. map of a hundred something. It's a battle royale, fighting, fighting it out, kind of. Yeah. And and you're in teams, but you know, I, I get what you're saying. It comes to the point where, like, if you are literally upset that there is no single player in the game, mm. I guess don't buy it and try and vote with your wallet. Maybe I don't even know what what your precursor is. I, 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 I don't care. No. I liked Battlefield One's war stories. Mm-hmm. I liked like two of them out of all of them. Battlefield Five, I played like the first five minutes and went, "This is terrible," and I just stopped. Mm-hmm. And Four, I if you paid me a hundred dollars, I don't think I could tell you a single thing about that game. I mean, literally, people are skeptical about this game. Buy Game Pass for ten. What was it? Fifteen <laughs> <Borrow>. bucks. <laughs> Try it out. Yeah, well, we don't. I, 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 yeah, I appreciate you trusting me that much. That that see if I actually am right. I don't even know if I'm actually right. But if that's even true, if you're on Xbox, if, okay, you have no if, excuse. If let's let's say if, if it comes to battle, it's a, it's a Game Pass. Game Pass yeah. Fifteen dollars or ten bucks, depending yeah. on Game Pass. Yeah. Ten, well, then for Game Pass, fifteen. Oh, yeah, fold, I man. know what you mean. Yeah. Try it out. You have a month. If you like it and your Game Pass runs out, buy the game. You're that or cheapest. We're keep confident. getting ultimate. We're confident. This game's coming. Game <laughs> we know. We know it is. I. I. I'll. I'll bet a steak dinner. Oh, that? I. It was first off. It was my prediction to begin with, but I guess you can have it too. <laughs> I guess the achievers are gonna buy us a steak dinner. I don't oh, know who's the. Man, I just. Want, I just want some steak. Man. You know what I'm <laughs> I don't know who's getting who steak dinner, but sure, no. yes, why not? Look, I'll give you a steak dinner. There you go. Achievers, yeah, we'll make you a steak dinner. We'll put it on Instagram and everything. I'm just gonna draw a steak on a plate. Alex, uh, this this might get heated. I don't honestly know your position in this, which is Uh-oh. honestly gets me excited because we might have heated. a we might have a good, for lack of a better word, debate about this. So I got heated with the PlayStation Five camera. Let's see. That's, that's true. We did do that. That was we got really mad for no reason. <laughs> All right. So there was an interview from Mr. Herman Holes directly from the <laughs> Teat itself PlayStation blog. They had a sit down. They had a couple of conversations. I took everything that I thought was interesting and put it down here. First quote. Quote and again via PlayStation blog. Quote. So we have currently. Two very big, very narrative-driven oh. games in development. God. Horizon Forbidden West and the next God of War. I and like for both of those, already. they're <laughs> frankly affected by access to perform, capture, and talent. For Horizon, we think we're on track to release this holiday season, but this isn't quite certain yet, and we're working as hard as we can to confirm that as soon as we can. It's not and happening. for God of War, the project started a little later, so we've made the decision to push that game out to next year to ensure that Santa Monica Studio can deliver the amazing God of War game that we all want to play. End quote. Very quickly, that was the first quote. The reason I, of course, read that was Horizon Zero Dawn is very likely not coming out this year. Yeah. I am pretty certain. You do first off, we nope. were pretty sure because we had a state of play that had a whole thing about Horizon and it just ended without even bringing up the release date. Mm-hmm. Second, 
when the head of your PlayStation Studios goes, we we want to release this holiday, kind you know. We can't. We hope. It, it, it when he's giving you the like, it's it, it's not coming. I will be shocked if this hits a November release date because clear because uh, I think I'm clear, thinking I th- spring. I well no I think if they I think if they if they make it this year it has to be November because if it's any earlier they would have already known they can make that date. November is mm-hmm. the, the is like the latest that they could probably justify okay, I feel releasing. Like gonna, if they do that, I feel like it's gonna push it and something like that's gonna happen. I, no no I don't I don't want them to do this. I'm just clearly yeah. I'm just saying like if they are gonna release this year it has to mm-hmm. be November because if it was September or October. They would have known by now if they were able to unfit. So, mm. I think it's probably going to be. I would be sp- February, March, February, March, probably February. Yeah, I February can, I can. for some reason feels good to me. I don't know why. But that was the first thing I want to bring up. We're, we're probably not seeing Horizon, and then God of War was kind of like, I, I'm not even going to say delayed. It, it, we all knew it wasn't coming out. No, we knew. How does, I like how they worded this too. They're like, like for like Horizon, they were like, yeah. "Oh, we're working as hard as we can to so that you, uh, for you, as soon as we can, confirm it or whatever." Yeah. But they and then they were like talk, talking about God of War, and they're like, "So we can deliver the amazing game you all want to play." So are you saying we don't want to play Horizon? <laughs> yeah, like, the, yeah. He did, there was. What? So out of the two, you you for sure know which one's the top one. It's oh, of course, be God of course. War. Especially with how like, many adjectives he's drummed into that thing. Exactly. Now I will say. The all, of course this is this is PlayStation talking to itself here. Mm-hmm. Very interesting that they had these quotes ready when he has all the time in the world to write these up and like proofread them. These are kind of bad quotes to be honest. Like <laughs> some of these get pretty like what? <clears throat> but move, moving on. Mm-hmm. This is when it. This is when it gets going how does ps4 fa- this is the question how does ps4 factor into playstation studios development vision is it still a focus internally for future game development and this is herman of course it is very much you can't build a community of over 110 million ps4 owners and then just walk away from it right i think that'd be bad news for fans of ps4 and frankly not very good business where it makes sense to develop a title for both ps4 and ps5 for Horizon Forbidden West, the next God of War, and Gran Turismo 7, we'll continue looking at that. And if PS4 owners want to play that game, then they can. If they want to go on and play the PS5 version, that game will be there for them too. That being said, it's also very important to have showcases for PS5, hence the development of Fraternal and Ratchet that are exclusives to PS5. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Hmm. Why are they saying it like this? I'm... There has been a discourse over Twitter from the last week. Me, me and Alex took last week off to do our E3 predictions, so I didn't touch this at all. I bottled it up inside of my chest, and I bitched about it a little bit on Twitter. <laughs> there are a lot of arguments that first don't make sense on Twitter. There's a lot of people out there pretending to be developers, and they don't understand anything. Two, there's a lot of people being very dismissive on being upset that there's not going to be a PS5 exclusive in the first two years of the system coming out. <laughs> Aside from Eternal and Demon Souls and Ratchet and Clank. That's three games. Alex, I want you to say your piece because I know exactly what I'm going to say to this. Do you care at all that there's going to be a PS4 version of God of War Horizon Forbidden West, we don't care about Gran Turismo, but I will also include Gran Turismo. I know you don't care about that, but I will include it in the question. Do you care at all? A little bit. Are you, the, are you, and if you do care, sorry, if you do care, are you upset? Are you happy? Are you glad I mean, con- that this is coming? I'm just concerned. Go ahead. Because if there's, let's say, there only, there's, if there's only a PS5 version, all the resources are going to go to that IP in that version to make sure that that plays as a PS5 game should be. Mm-hmm. Now they're splitting it into two different SKUs. So if they make a PS4 version, or excuse me, let's start with the if they make the PS5 version, are they going? Are they going? They're going to have to dumb down a bunch of stuff to be able to be played on the PS4. That, it, for example, if we go back to God, I hate that I'm going to bring it up. Black Ops Three. Remember how they're in the 
Xbox One version was a uh, tank that you could see and you're running around. And then on the 360 version, it was a, like a truck. Mm. Like they had to switch completely graphics because they yeah. couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. If that's a good, that, that's a good feel, point. I now I feel that. like if I feel like if they put too much, if, to, they're gonna be like, oh, we're gonna have to try to make this, make sure this game works on four. Okay. That they're not gonna, they're not gonna pay attention to the details that it needs to be to feel like an exclusive for five. I feel like they're if they do a four, I, I have a bad feeling that they're gonna be like five. It's just sixty frames. It's not gonna feel. It's not gonna feel like a PS5 game. It's just gonna feel like a PS4 game boosted. That's Alex, what I'm, my worry is. Alex, you just hit the nail on the head for me. Everyone is. Uh, there's a lot of arguments saying, well, when you when it, first off, oh my god, I'm trying not to come across as an asshole here, so I <laughs> apologize fine. if I do achievers. I am not attacking anyone. Dude, I love everyone that I follow on Twitter. This is not pointed to anyone specific. There's a lot of arguments that I don't agree with, but I can. We can discuss that like cordial gentlemen or gentle ladies, and we can have a conversation or debate. Mm-hmm. No need to get offensive. Now, <laughs> starting all that, there's people saying that the X90, uh, I might butcher this, the X86 architecture, I believe is what it's called, okay. for the PS4 and PS5, make it easier to port games. First okay. off, I don't care if that's true. And it's not, first off. It's not like you hit a button and, and oh, this PS5 game works on PS4 now. Glad mm-hmm. that it, that worked. That's not how it works. <clears throat> Do not pretend that's not how it works because you're being disingenuous <laughs> if you are. Second, when you are making a video game, and this is going back to Mark Cerny when he had that GDC thing that me and Alex mm-hmm. watched and had no idea what was going on. Mm-mm. If you, Alex, I know you, and we're joking. We, we understood most of that stuff. We had a whole podcast about it. Yeah, yeah, we talk. When he brought up the SSD, this is from his, the guy who made the PS5s, his words when he brought up that SSD. There are things in this that is simply not possible on PS4. That is from the person who made the system. <clears throat> Second, when he described how you load a game, you load in a hard drive in chunks. You can't load the game continuously like you can on an SSD. On a hard drive, it loads in segments. That's why, in for instance, Resident Evil Village, which is a brand new game that just came out, had to be developed on Xbox One and PS4. That's why sometimes when you go through a door and he opens it really slowly, you know, it makes it look like he's kind of like going under the weight. It's not only to add a cinematic feel to opening that door or twisting a valve. It's so the game can load the next portion of the game. Mm -hmm. Now, if you really want to have this argument, we have to start dissecting games to the very notion of themselves to understand how they're loading things. Mm -hmm. There's one uh, part where you grab a lever and you pull it down and and the game goes really slow. You know why? Because Mm -hmm. it's loading the next environment I'm about to to go to. Why in the factory, when I'm with Duke, when I hit an elevator button, does the elevator take so long? Because the game is loading. Right Mm -hmm. now on PS4, that elevator ride might take 30 seconds, where on my PS5, it's going to take 10. When you break down that much of the system, it gets a lot more complicated, and it's not just hitting a button and putting it over to PS4. Mm -hmm. Alex, when you brought up the point of resources are going to be used to Mm -hmm. be able to have this game run on PS4. Mm Mm-hmm. Part of why my argument sucks at the end of the day is there is no way for me to feel like I'm wrong. (laughs) This is kind of a shitty thing to say, but whenever we see God of War or Horizon, first off, these games are beautiful. I have no doubt I'm going to look at God of War. I have no doubt I'm going to look at God of War and be like, oh my God, this looks amazing. Mm -hmm. But what if? That is always going to be in my head. But what if this was just a PS5 game? But what if they only had to develop for one game and not have to develop for an almost 10-year-old console? 10 mm-hmm. years, Alex. Yeah, because they have to make sure that it could run on the original PS4. years. Everyone's bringing up PC like I care. We have never done that. Alex, Xbox One, Rise, Son of Rome, 
Mm-hmm. Sunset Overdrive, PS4. We had Resogun. We had Killzone Shadowfall. Those were mm-hmm. exclusives. Why are we all of a sudden okay with no exclusives? I don't understand. Why are we like cool with PlayStation just being like everything's on PS4 and the games are going to be held back and blah blah blah. Like I really don't understand why we're like, oh, it's okay, yeah. Is and it's also you're kind of a dick if you argue against it. It's like why am I a dick because I want like, these games to be like the these fullest. are supposed to be the next gen consoles start next gen we thank you we've, how many time? how many you said what 10 years that we've had ps4 yes it'll I be get ten, P- it'll be 10 years in 2023 my only the only reason i feel like they're doing this is because they haven't been able to, to make enough systems for people to get one so that's actually been an argument and i completely it, this is another thing where i i have to simply say I don't care. <laughs> I don't. That is not my problem. That, yeah. uh, and it sounds like a dick move. First off, there's more PS5s. Sony from them. This is from the cow's so, mouth. Sony said it. Sony so. said they sold more PS5s than they did PS4s. Infamous Second Son came out like a year after the system launch. No one cared then. That was an exclusive. Mm-hmm. Why didn't that come out to PS3? Don't come at me with like cell architecture. That was not the reason they wanted it to. So it would be a, a system seller. That was the reason. Mm-hmm. So I'd be frank. Like I've all and I've already said on this podcast. When people ask me, do I need to buy a, a next gen system? I go, not really. Unless you really want games to load faster, mm-hmm. and that's about it. What, what I mean, what what's the what's the must must buy game right now? Yeah, right now I'm, I'm going to tell them Demon Souls. Then. No. I'm not going to tell them Demon Souls. Demon Souls, first off, is for crazy people like me and Alex who want to like get our teeth kicked in for 20 minutes. Returnal is even worse than that. It's 20 times as harder. And then we have Ratchet and Clank, one game that is for one everyone. Game so far. One game. One game has been so far. One. I get. I'm gonna say this again. We have three fucking exclusive games, and it's we're two years into this. It's Alex. I told you I'd get heated. I just, I don't understand why, why, first off, we couldn't have the conversation to begin with, because it seems like if you take this side, you're, like, labeled as, like, some troll on Twitter, which is just such Mm. a, frankly, lazy way to get rid of an argument. Second, there's also been a lot of, like, you're going to buy the game anyways. It's like, what a, that's such a lazy way to argue. Like, oh, because I'm going to buy the game, I can't have an opinion. So, like. (laughs) Alex, you have any mm. final thoughts with this? I I've been stewing on this for literally a week, and I've wanted to talk about it. Dude, I, I'm like I get, again, I'm just worried that they're gonna w- worry about so much that they're gonna about uh being able to play this game on the OG PS4 that the PS5 version is not gonna feel like a PS5 version. It's gonna feel like an upgraded PS4 version. It's gonna feel. It's literally what gonna would feel happen, like a PS4 Pro game. What would happen to Ratchet and Clank if it had to run on PS4? What would happen? Let's just ask ourselves when we go to play that this Friday, and we play in that game and it feels great. What if this had to play on PS4? God knows how many changes they would have had. God knows. We and, wouldn't and have gotten this game it, right it, now. It, it, that's that's my main issue. What if? And again, that's part of. What makes my argument flawed is you can't, no one can really say I'm wrong, which kind of sucks. I wish there was a way of knowing, like, mm-hmm. yes or no. Either it is holding games back, which, again, there's literally no way it's not. I just can't accept that. Someone has to come out here and explain to me how it's not. But there's just no way it's not, it, it, it's, it's not being held back. I just can't. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't understand. Again, it's not like you hit a button, you hit a switch, and it's like, all right, it's works on ps4 now don't have to worry about any loading issues we don't have to worry about high assets bogging down load times we don't have to worry about this huge load zone anymore like come on like it's it has to it has to be an issue there has to be something it's in a ps5 because... game because because this is this is the, the point of the of their argument alex if there if there's no difference between a ps4 game and a ps5 game then why the fuck did we buy this for real. We if there's no for, difference, we, then we why the fuck did we buy these systems? We bought it for why did triggers. we buy Yes, that's good. Yeah, that's why we did. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but, but for real though, like 
I that's why I don't understand the argument. They're like, oh, if there's no difference, then why would I buy it? Like, like, like when uh, what was it? We uh, like literally last gen PS4. Yes, sir. people bought God of War, or excuse me, bought a PS4 for God of War. Yeah, God of War for, uh, four or the the, re, the new one was not on PS3. It was only PS4. So yeah. people bought the system. This next God of War, I'm using it as an example. I feel like at first they were going to be like, oh, it's supposed it's going to be an exclusive to PS5 only. But now look at it. I mean, like, it's just, I, I just feel like uh, the people, if they're like, oh, if it's on PS4 and there's no difference, like you said, why buy the PS5? I could just play it on my PS4. Yeah. Because then we're just arguing about load times. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, really. like for real. Like, and, and again, and when people come up to ask me, like, do I need to buy one? No, you can to wait. Be fair, you can have a PS4 you and you can play do every not game. Care for load times, only the crazy people like us do. Yeah, for real. Like uh, again, like uh, literally, the people who don't care, they'll be like, "Oh, hey, loading time. All right, this is what I'm gonna do real quick." Yeah, I'm gonna start this up real quick for this game. Oh, okay, it's up. Okay, cool. Yeah, for and it's and again, it, it's not like we're dealing with a launch Bloodborne. Like launch yeah. Bloodborne, like loaded for like two minutes or something, some mm-hmm. god awful time. It's not like that. Like, it, it, like these games are still like loading 10, 20 seconds apart. That's so, it. so like if you can't, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I, again, I would love some, if concerned. someone's out there listening right now and they're like, Oh, Elijah, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. Let me, uh, p- please tell us, please tell me, comment, tweet, hit me up. I did have, um, <clears throat> a developer was actually nice enough to tweet and kind of explain his side of things that I forgot to actually add to this docket. I'm going to grab it real quick, Alex, if you don't mind um, uh, filling yeah. some time for me. So, yeah, my it is crazy to think also, like, I mean, yes, like you said, Demon's Souls has been uh, Returnal and Ratchet have been, like, the only three exclusives. And... It's people were people were just like, where are all the exclusives? I mean, like, well, it doesn't seem like you're gonna get any more of them because they're all gonna be on four. So it's just, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna just reiterating what I said. I'm just a little concerned of how these next games are coming up. That's I feel like that's why they're delaying them because they're trying to make sure that it does feel like a difference in playing these system in two games. Because mm-hmm. right now, I bet you there's no difference. One probably looks a little sharper with 60 frames, and that is it. Again, I'm sure 4K makes a difference. If you have a pro, it won't be as crazy of a difference because you're already getting kind of upscaled experience. Yeah. Like but, if you have a pro versus a PS5 and you have the same exact game, ooh. no difference, bro. Yeah, it might not be a difference. I I, I mean, I don't want to. Literally, I right before the God of War got that, uh, this, what was it? I think it was a 60 frames patch. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I play, I played it on my pro. Mm-hmm. Then I played it on my PS5. No difference, literally, until that patch. Are you telling me that are you going to make sure that that patch is going to be up for every game? There's no way that patch is going to be up for every game. They're going to be like, oh, we'll we'll co- we'll come out in a couple of weeks with that patch. This is one no. of those arguments where I, I I feel like I'm a crazy person. Yeah, I I, re- I honestly do. Like there was everyone like. If you believe this, like, like, I don't want to get into it. Uh, I do want to bring up the first off. This gentleman was nice enough to take time to write out a very lengthy statement. I'm going to go ahead and read what he sent me to give full context from a developer point of view. Because, again, we are just two people that kind of fucking understand this stuff. So I mm-hmm. want to bring in um, a developer. This is I should have checked with you. Mm, I mean, this is public. So I, I, this is at Wartex 17. It, 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 he seems like a very nice gentleman. If he t- if he tweeted on Twitter, it's public. Yeah, that's why I was like, hey, he probably doesn't care. Yeah, uh, hopefully he doesn't. If you're little- watching this, sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So this this was when me and um uh one of my uh Twitter friends were talking, and I was saying like, it's an issue if you bring up Horizon and God of War and go, look, if you if you pulling these to again ten plus year old systems, <clears throat> I was being a little hyperbolic, but you know almost 10 year old systems you're gonna see some sort of difference between your original view of the ps5 game and he comes with and i was like i i just wish there was a i wish i could talk to a dev right now and have someone explain something and he came in like um like a knight in shining armor i guess uh <laughs> so he said it depends and that's in quotes 
You can compare it to non-exclusives. Of course, if we deliver a game to Switch and PC and PS4 or PS5, you're, you'll not receive the lowest common denominator, which is Switch, yes, in parentheses. You might not see a difference if the, um, and you got an example, the <clears throat> graphics are highly stylized. Like, you, you won't see a huge difference, but of course, on the Switch version, you, the, it's probably going to look messed up. So he's just kind of uh, pointing out, like, native systems, and then you have something you Switch, a lot less powerful. You're going to see a difference mm-hmm. there, because the graphics aren't going to look the same. Mm-hmm. What will happen, of course, is with the development team has to attribute time and budget for the platform-specific fixes and optimizations. Same could happen for PS5, PS4, but it's likely a lot easier than a Switch and PS5. Um, They don't have a dev kit, so they're just kind of guessing here. Uh, In the end, though, what a lot of games will do is have a target quality for optimum specs for, like, PS5, or they have some sort of PC hardware setup that mirrors whatever they're working on, so, like, Mm -hmm. they'll have a pc spec to ps5 or a pc spec to like switch or something Mm. um they will downscale for other platforms imagine it like dev tweaking the quality settings for you in advance something you can usually do on a pc this is of course simplified and there are cases where quality is not the only counterweight to performance sometimes it's design and he gives in parentheses ratchet and click rift apart and then it's something design has to accommodate for that problem is not new, though. See games that can be played with different input systems. So, of course, like... I'm blanking on an example, but essentially, like, something that has a full-on different system of inputs, like a, mm-hmm. a full-on keyboard or a controller. Yep. Um, heck, it can even be a problem the other way around. Half of Metal Gear Solid 1's fourth wall-breaking jokes won't work on modern consoles because the infrastructure from back then simply doesn't exist anymore. Something mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid 4 makes fun of. If you don't have memory cards, you can't make the joke about your memory card having a save on it. If mm-hmm. you don't know that reference, there was a character that was psychic in the game, and when you fought the boss, if I'm remembering correctly, he would read your memory card, and he would, and he had like predetermined things he would say. So if he, I, I don't remember the specific games he would make fun of, but there was there were games he would read your memory card, find the save for, it, and then have a programmed reaction to that save which cool. first off this is pretty sick i've never actually done that but for the time that's pretty crazy for, yeah oh yeah and yeah i mean come on the like that was that's actually pretty cool i remember hearing about that and being like first off i want to play metal gear i had never have but i that was like oh, i kind of want to play that it sounds cool but again that mm. joke will not work anymore because it doesn't make any sense because we mm. don't have memory cards anymore but consoles already started tearing this advantage down, introducing pro versions and whatnot with different specs, but full compatibility requirements. 4K costs more performance, but it's not like the PS4 Pro handed devs a magical toggle that made it available without dev work. <laughs> so, it's from a straight dev that first off knows what he's talking about. Again, we don't, so we're just kind of guessing here. But first off, again, thank you for taking the time if you're watching the second mm-hmm. it gives a unique uh, point of view i still harbor a feeling that regardless this costs something mm-hmm. you don't get anything for free oh, this no, costs sure. something that's all i want to say mm-hmm. oh ben they <laughs> officially announced don't they are me. working on a new ip and this is a One of those written out statements like in a picture format. We are beyond grateful for your support with Days Gone and are truly honored by the amount of passion our community has shared with us for our worlds and characters. Your enthusiasm motivates us to continue to improve and create experiences that will last a lifetime. From Siphon Filter to uh, Resistance Retribution to Uncharted Golden Abyss and Days Gone. We are very excited today that we are expanding the Ben Studio portfolio with a brand new IP. We hope you embark on this new journey with us. We can't wait to show you what we've been working on, Ben Studios. So they officially said we're working on a new IP. This is definitely damage control of them being like, you have to go out there and you have to stop this Days Gone 2 nonsense. Just tell them you're working on a new game. Thank them for the thing. Like, this is clearly something like someone told them like, Go announce your new game. Yeah, we got to stop this Days Gone to make it happen thing. Mm-hmm. It's it's how I read it. What do you think, Alex? 
I could be totally off base. I, no, I agree. They, they, it's they were like, yeah, Days Gone Two is dead. They're like, yeah, we the we can see the support, but it just can't happen. Mm-hmm. And be, if 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 they don't tell somebody to stop, they're gonna keep going. So yeah. And two people uh, originally with Ben left after that pitch. We know now mm-hmm. the reason they left. Obviously, we didn't know before, but they left the studio mm-hmm. um, about a, a year or two ago. Um, clearly, because the Days Gone Two pitch did not pan out. So mm-hmm. um, I've, I'm blanking on their names. I apologize, <clears throat> but it's uh, I, I believe it was their studio head and the director. I want to say left. So it's definitely one of those things of like, huh, bend. They they were like work on Uncharted, and then they had to ask to be taken off that. Oh god! And as a reminder, we are getting an Uncharted remake and a Last of Us one remake. That's just to remind everybody that's there's still a thing for some reason we're getting. Happen. Alex, Call of Duty Vanguard that leaked. If you remember correctly, this was a World War Two. I guess you could say alternate history game. This will not be at E3. This will be an in-game event at some point in Warzone um, as they make a World War II type uh, event. But that is it. That Col- uh, The Call of Duty game will not be anywhere around E3. It looks like they have moved on to getting Warzone as their Fortnite, in quotes, kind mm-hmm. of event style where they don't need events. They, can, they have their own system for that now. Mm-hmm. A- a- as a reminder... Fortnite was showing movies. Dude, As a yeah. reminder, everybody, Fortnite had movies in it. I feel like we all glossed over that because it was so weird we couldn't comprehend that. Mm-hmm. But they had like whole ass movie trailers. Mm-hmm. Like what? Wh- it's yeah, what a Star Wars event. Yeah, I do. Oh my god. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh my god. Yeah, they had whole trade in a game, like it's YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Alex, this was just interesting more than anything. Um, Atari mm. founder launches new game studios, Athena Worlds. Founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell, is among the board of directors for this new studio, Athena Worlds. Um, it's a new outfit that aims to deliver a video, a video game technology with similar quality visuals. Of course, we don't get much. It's literally just a new studio, so we don't get much, of course, because it's just they just started. So. It's called Athena Worlds? Athena Worlds, yes, it's the studio. Um, and of course, this man did establish Atari and made Pong and Asteroids, two of the most probably recognizable games ever mm-hmm. made. Some very quick Horizon details um, that we saw. Uh, there's a free climbing system. Um, there's a skill tree melee system with combos. There's a lot of different biomes, more workbenches, kind of like Last of Us, it seemed. Um, and all it said was development on track. Whatever you want to say to that, whatever that means, development is on. Sure. <laughs> development on track for March, baby. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. We'll get that. We'll get that in March, and then we'll get God of War possibly summer or fall. Most likely fall. We covered well, that already. Year. We have an issue. Sorry, Chiefers, I have to skip something. I forgot to clean up the docs part of this message, so I guess I accidentally skipped something somehow uh, from deleting. So we're wow. going to skip that. Get, wow. get to some straight Forza Motorsport news, Alex, your favorite game. Um, mm, this is, is from it. the creative director, Chris Essick. He was talking with Forza Monthly, which I completely forgot was still a thing, but that is true. There's a thing called Forza Monthly. But <laughs> I'm a core gameplay guy, a core mechanics guy, and I really think about uh, about all the things that we do. The rubber meets the road and that sort of thing as core gameplay, and essentially we are building on this solid foundation of our Forza field that our players know and love and just making it that much better, end quote. Uh, oh, sorry, the quote continues. So I've been trying to think about how to qualify this for everyone here without actually getting your hands on it. Excuse me. So to put the physics work into perspective for everyone, the changes we made from Forza Motorsport 7 till now, it's more than the changes that we made from Forza Motorsport 4 through 7. Damn. So it's basically a huge generational leap coming to the game. And That's quote. a big jump. That's a big jump. That is kind of like saying, though, like, we haven't had this big of a jump since the last console jump, I feel well, like, that's right? That's crazy, yeah, because so. Xbox One was, it was, it was uh, Forza 5. With the orange car, with the McLaren. That Correct. was the yep. first one. Yep. And then through this whole thing. Wow. That's a big jump. 
Big jump. I'm I'm excited. Uh, me and Alex usually aren't the motorsport people, but it is kind of but... yeah. It's kind of the showcase game though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's on Game Pass, so it's like might as well like play it. You know, you, you, you're mm-hmm. not like it's usually that ch- like game you play to check out the graphics yes. because they work so much into these graphics. They work tirelessly to make sure it looks incredible mm-hmm. and it always does oh somehow yeah. it always looks better i really don't it's, understand it's how it is because because it's it always looks real so like it just makes it look more real it's crazy it's good it, for it's, them we, that's mm-hmm. one of those people that i feel like we don't give enough credit to because it's just there it's, all it, the time yeah. and uh, you know it's not our interest but like they've been killing it they've had mm-hmm. seven games and they not had a spin-off Horizons. series yeah so like it's 11 forza games total yeah and clearly is profitable because they wouldn't be making them anymore if they weren't. So that is mm-hmm. a staple game that is very Xbox. I feel like if you and I, I know a lot of uh, racing people. Forza's kind of the game. The Forza is because it used to be Gran, Gran Turismo. Turismo. Gran Turismo mm-hmm. used to be the racing game. First off, mm-hmm. Gran Turismo Seven is probably going to sell like millions of units. I think Gran Turismo Sport sold more than all of the Uncharted's or some garbage like crazy thing or something like that. Which is insane, but I, I, I do don't think think that's gonna do better than Forza, though. Really? I mm-hmm. I, doubt, oh, I doubt that. I doubt that because I now, think Gran Turismo is huge in Europe. I think that's where they get the majority yeah, of their sales. It is. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's. I guess it all depends because you PlayStation. You know, it's a PlayStation versus Xbox thing. So it depends on what literally, like, literally, yeah. it is a PlayStation. Like, oh my god! Hmm. Gran Turismo Sport has sold an estimated 8 million copies. This is from uh, uh, 2019, so they've sold more than this since then. Okay, so in 2019, they did 8 million. That's a lot of copies. That How, much did, how, how much did Forza Motorsport 7 do? Probably not even half of that. Let's see. I don't even think they would have released it, because Microsoft isn't like as... And that's the first. Yeah, they don't really talk numbers, so I don't think we ha- we really have a like a, a way of of saying because I guess so. Yeah, because all all I have here is they sold a hundred and seventy six thousand units in the first week. Oh, it's uh, for me. It says two hundred and ten uh, where I found it. I mean, it, that's probably. I mean, it's, it's probably right. This is it a says whole it, thing. Oh wow! It, yeah, you're right because it, it says only 1.3 million units lifetime. Ooh. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, Gran Turismo is huge, dude. Gran Turismo. I didn't yeah, know either. Yeah, so don't blame yourself, Alex. I didn't know either. Mm-hmm. I I learned this secondhand from a friend. I didn't know it was that many sales. So why that's to, an to insane fair, amount yeah. of before sport. We haven't gotten a Gran Turismo like six was out in PS3, and it was like I mean it's been a good amount of years. And Forza we get one like every other year, so I could see like that's, maybe people are that's are, like, true. I mean, Polyphony is good at what they do, man. For whatever reason, they I mean people love that game. I would love I now I kind of want to play the new one just to see mm-hmm. what what is it because I haven't played Gran Turismo. I think I played Gran Turismo. Uh. Uh, no, the new one, seven. Um, okay. I think I played Gran Turismo two. I played, I played five. I remember the last one. It I might have been. I see. I need to see I remember the cover. playing on PS. I remember playing on PS three. I played Gran Turismo on PS two. Hmm. I think it was a red cover. I think. Um. I think that's six. No, that was PS. Oh no! I played Gran Turismo three. Um, I remember this. The, it has the um, blue. Um, I don't know what car this is. Do I need to look it up? Yeah, it, yeah. Just Gran Turismo. I'm a car guy. Uh, Gran, three. Three. You, you might be three. able to tell. It's only like literally the back of the cars. So I don't. I don't think you could tell. But uh, Gran Turismo three. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's but that's see. the one I I played. I I like I liked it fine. I wasn't huge into racing games back then either. So it's not like I was. Uh, that's a Corvette because you could tell by the rim. That's a Z06 vet. Wait no, this is six. What the? F- I pressed Gran Turismo three and it gave me six. <laughs> Nerd. Okay, there we go. Um. Oh well, yeah. Three literally doesn't show you anything. Yeah, it doesn't show you. Anything. I was like, I, if you figure that out, you're a ma- you're a master. Ah, uh, yeah, I can't tell. Alex, there's some games coming to Game Pass. 
For Honor, Cloud and Console, June 3rd, Wars marches across the land of Heath Moore as heroes from rival factions clash in unending visceral battles. User finally honed skills to emerge victorious. Backbone, an idea at Xbox game that comes to PC on Game Pass June 8th. Raccoon Detective Howard Loader is not a hero. He can barely make rent. And yet he has stumbled upon across something so massive that it would shake the very fabric of society. <laughs> Stunning visuals, an evocative soundtrack, and a daring narrative bring a dystopian Vancouver, uh, Bank Vancouver inhabited by animals to life in this highly anticipated post noir adventure. Get to it, Detective Alex. Alex, don't ask me. Mm -mm. Yes, mm -mm. we we're showing an achievers a a. a a trailer for Backbone. We have to. We just have to, Alex. So For Honor is still a thing? Alex, For Honor is Dude, huge. He, yeah, people love this. Dude, For game. Honor is huge. It's like Rainbow Six where you thought it was dead yeah. and then you like you like kick over a rock and you see like millions of people like, we love this game. <laughs> like It's like, oh my it's god. Crazy. It's nuts. It is nuts. It, uh, it's only the reveal trailer, it looks like. So just show it. You, know, uh, you just you know mute it. I will. Give me a second. I'm gonna pause this. We're gonna we're gonna keep going though. I don't want the. Uh, <clears throat> I want to get through all of these. Then we'll look at Darkest Dungeon, Cloud Console, and PC. Another idea at Xbox game June 10th. Mm -hmm. Darkest Dungeon, a challenging gothic roguelike turn-based RPG with the psychological stress of adventuring. Recruit, train, and lead a team of flawed heroes. Through twisted fours, forgotten warrens, ruined crypts, and beyond. Not only do unimaginable fools away, but stress, famine, disease, and the ever encroaching dark. Sounds great. <laughs> uh, these are DLC game updates. I feel like uh, not necessarily need to skip this. Uh, oh, and um, I did not put this in date updates, but um, Blackwood for Elder Scrolls Online is June 8th. Um, for everyone that's interested, that has already come that's out. The, isn't that the Oblivion DLC? Yes, for that is. Yeah, that's kind of like a, a very Oblivion. Mm -hmm. Well, you're Oblivion. going back to Oblivion, technically. Shut. Wow. <laughs> you see how he treats me? <laughs> get now, him. very get him in the comments. Get, get, it, get in the comments. Now, everything else is... So, very skimmed list. That wasn't much. So... Maybe so some big what, E3. You know. What is this Minecraft caves and cliffs that I'm seeing here? Let's read it. Is um, this another, like, like the Telltale thing? Remember how they did the story? Minecraft Caves and Cliffs Part 1 came out June 8th. Delve into Part 1 of the Caves and Cliffs update on June 8th with fun mobs, blocks, and items. Go underwater to team up with the Axolotl and meet, a, and meet the Glow Squid. Tread carefully on high ground because the goals might, the goats might ram you. Mine copper and use it to build structures that will age over time. So it's a new update. You get, uh, it looks like you get to go underwater and team up with an oxalotl, and you get to meet a glow squid. And there's goats now, and there's copper. So does that answer your question, Alex? <laughs> this is an update, not a game. This is an an update to the game. Got it. <laughs> you got the little stinky face. You're like, mm, what is this? Uh, of course, there's the Game Pass uh, quests. I won't go over there here, but um, they, they're they very, yeah, yeah. I don't think many people care. If you do, let us know. I will start reading them, but I just doubt anyone actually cares. Mm -hmm. Leaving yeah, June we're... 15th, so in five days, you can play these games for the five days or you buy them at a 20% off discounted rate for being a Game Pass. But again, these leave in five days, so make sure to do that. Post haste. As of recording, uh, if you're not a Patreon member, you only have two days left, so ensure you're on top of this. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown on console. Night Call Cloud Console and PC. West of Dead Cloud Console and PC. Wizard of Legend Cloud Console and PC. Observation Cloud Console and PC. All those games will be leaving mm -hmm. June 15th. Achievers, make sure to get on that. Interesting. All right, I, I promised the Achievers we're going to look at a raccoon, so that's what we're going to do, and then we're going to get mm -hmm. into date updates. We got some fucking hilarious stuff for you today because there's a whole game that's just not launching anymore ever again. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not, not really. 
it kind of is. <clears throat> but not really. But kind of. This is. Sorry, sorry if this looks stupid, achievers. It does. Hold on. That. It's... Look, we're not techies, all right? We're well, still learning the ropes. Well, see, the problem is, Alex, I have to do all of this, you know, like, and this isn't, of course, making fun of you. Like, I have to do this all by myself, where most people have a dedicated mm. person for this. Watching this raccoon walk around. Very wolf among us. So have you noticed that like a lot want, of uh, a lot of these side scrolling like no yeah all the, a lot of these games that do this mm -hmm. they always show you passing a fucking movie theater because <laughs> it's because you get an excuse to put some neons on something you know yes yeah people love them neons so what are you like a detective oh yeah you're a detective did you not okay. listen to anything I said no I bl <laughs> I blacked out when you said the, when you started reading these I respect it I respect it. But yeah, you're you're a raccoon detective. You're solving mysteries. Interesting. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything looks, else to it. it I pretty deep. I will say the art. It's no, fantastic. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was honestly expecting a not good game, but this looks fantastic. If I'm being honest, like, like this looks actually one? really good. Or the llama one. Yeah, I was expecting a llama. That's a no, cool. I don't know why. But it's literally a raccoon and a fox, but this looks so cool. Like, like, right? You know I, is giving, it just me? It's giving me a lot of L.A. Noir feel. Yeah, I see that. It feels a lot like Wolf Among Us to me. Like, a lot. Yeah. Like, a lot. It's, to me, it's like L.A. Noir mixed with Zootopia. I was going to make fun of you, but that's 100% what it is. I can't <laughs> even say you're wrong. That's what it is. Literally what it is, Alex. That's good. Good job. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'll be honest with you. I'm impressed, Alex. Um, oh, hello, Prince of Persia fans. This is from Ubisoft. Ubisoft Forward is around the corner. <laughs> don't, uh, don't get excited, though. And we wanted to use this time to thank you for the amount of support you've shown us in the past year. Game. As you might have already read, Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake will oh, not be in Ubisoft Forward. We are making great progress for our game to release next year, but we are not ready to share any additional information just yet. We will share an update as soon as we are ready. Until then, we wanted to express our appreciation for your continued support. Suppose your patience with us on our journey. We're looking forward to the moment we will be able to share more with you. Who's Except asking for this game? Dude, there's a lot of Prince of Persia fans now. I only played the one on PS2. Couldn't tell you what that one is. It might be this, this one, to be honest with is, you. It is. It is? This is a okay. remake. You could tell me there's one Prince of Persia game or seven. I'd believe you either way. I have no idea. But How about how about don't make crappy as, uh, you know, Prince of Persia game. Make a fucking Splinter Cell game. But Alex is going to die on this hill. He wants a Splinter Cell game. Alex, we're not going to get it. We're never it's gonna not going to happen. It's, it's not going to happen. They, 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 they don't want Sam Fisher as their mascot anymore. That's what I'm, and that's what I'm hearing. I'm very curious why it, and no, really, hold on. Let's finish Prince of Persia thing real quick. Uh, just a heads up. It's not coming out anytime soon. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Achievers. I know a lot of people was excited for this. I think the reason was they were going to release the game as a re-release and then everyone was like, this looks like garbage. And they were like, sorry. All right. And I think they're just making it look a lot better now. I don't know. So mm. sorry if you were really excited. They really kind of like, this game was supposed to be out in February. So like, this is really like, took it a long time. Mm -hmm. um, back to the and Splinter Cell thing. I really want to know why they don't want a Splinter Cell. Like, game. Why there has to be a reason. Answered. There has to be reason. There has to have been. First off, you can't tell me there hasn't been a Splinter Cell game in development at some point. I'm assuming at some point someone pitched a Splinter Cell game and either they said no or it went into development and something happened and they stopped it and they tore it away and threw it away. Mm. I wouldn't be shocked if there is a Splinter Cell game right now being developed in either pre-pro or just finishing pre-pro i doubt it's very far along if they haven't is. gotten a new game in almost 10 years 2013 was blacklist blacklist wow yeah that was that was like around the launch that was a 360 game mm -hmm. oof and i don't count sam fisher being a rim in what was it rainbow six well he's in everything but yeah he's you in rainbow I mean? six he's about to be out i don't think he's out yet and yeah. he was in Ghost Recon Wildlands, I think? That's what it was. I'm sorry. That's what it was. It's yeah, he was in Wildlands, that, and you thing. could, like, get his stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't, I, I don't know what's going on with the game, man. I really don't. I I Ubisoft like there's not it, there's not a small amount of people asking for this. It is like a lot of people want a Splinter Cell game. I'm very curious what's going on, Alex. Do you think we see Beyond Good and Evil at the Ubisoft conference? I think we talked about this, but like I just I remember like, Beyond Good and Evil. I feel like I feel like this game is gonna get canceled. Really, Beyond Good and Evil? I had we had we've heard nothing. We've heard this game once. <laughs> That's true. We did. The, the, we saw we one, saw that like kind of look at the game. Let me see. Let me see. Beyond Good and Evil. And uh, reveal. Alex, do you remember when they asked the community to develop the game with them? Do you remember that? That was a real thing that happened. They they said you can develop the game with us. They had Elijah Wood out, right? Was that Elijah Wood? I don't remember. Pretty sure it was. When they show they they showed Beyond Good and Evil two trailer in twenty seventeen. Ooh, that's the last Ooh. time we Wait. saw this game. No. 2017 was when they announced it, I thought. That's it's the Beyond Good and Evil cinematic reveal trailer. Yeah, but they revealed that the next year they did the you can work on the game with us thing, right? Mm. And then they did the year after that was like a very quick like that guy was on a bike and he was like this is the word of Beyond Good and Evil. All right, bye. Like it was like 3 seconds of I feel like Feel like the last time we saw it was 2019. Uh, or it, it might have been Road to E3 2018. Maybe there, maybe I think maybe I think maybe you're right. Maybe we did get something in 2018, but it regard. First off, regardless, even if I am right, that still doesn't mean the game is okay. <laughs> like this game is in trouble. Period. Something's going on with it. I I know there's, I know there's. Uh, I'm not they gonna. Pay, I'm not gonna say a lot of Beyond Good and Evil look, fans, but I know they are which bad. Game Beyond. they want to cancel first: Skull and Bones or this? That's true. Ubisoft does have a lot of games that are like just in the back burner. Like, what's going on? <laughs> instead of instead of making this crappy ass this uh, division game thing that you all are trying to make, did in, you see the? Uh, I didn't have this. Heartland, oh, I think this was called. No, no, I forgot about this. Uh, sorry, Cheevers. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot to put this in the docket. I think Unless I did. Quarantine, Get but I accidentally they they changed it to what? What's it called? Rainbow Six Quarantine has it has a new name. Does it? Really? Uh, yeah. Extraction, Rainbow Six Extraction. That's what it's called now. Um, but they have um. better. Uh, there's a rumor that there's a division. There's a there's a mix between division, Ghost Recon, and was it Splinter Cell? Like all in one game? You're talking about the Heartland thing? No. Okay. No, not that. But I know I know what you're saying. Okay. Report Ghost Recon. To, yeah, here it is. Um, yeah, rumor. Ubisoft. Tom. Tom this is from um, Polygon. Uh, uh, this is a rumor. Ubisoft Tom Clancy games match up in a new free-to-play shooter, which oof, that's a sentence I don't want to see. Single multiplayer? No. no. Yeah, yeah. T- Tom Clancy, Spinner Cell, Ghost Recon, and Division of Frostbites will cross over in a single multiplayer game made by Ubisoft. This is a social media leak um, first reported by Video Game Chronicles. Which shout out to Video Game Chronicles. They get like all the scoops now. Uh, project codename Battle Cat. <laughs> that's a kind of sick name. Surfaced in several since deleted images posted Sunday. By uh, Twitter user Zero Bytes. Four images since removed. Um, they have copyright games, but they said they began testing in around January, which, by the way, tells you this is 100% true. So this is real. They wouldn't have taken it down otherwise. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to read anything else because there's nothing else uh, of substance. Of but this. It's a free to play. They want that Fortnite a money, man. Single they want that single multiplayer game. They want that Fortnite money, man. What does that That's even what that mean? is. No offense to Ubisoft. I love your games. They are trying for Fortnite money. That is what this is. Hyperscape sucks. <laughs> I'm saying it right now. It was not fun. I did not. It like needs it. better support. Uh, um, but but they're tr- they're trying for that Fortnite money, man. They're they're rolling the dice. And if they get an if they get a twenty, that's a lot of money, and they're relatively cheap to make, I assume, because they make like a million of them. 
Uh, part of the date update is me reading off the E3 2021 scheduling to all of you beautiful, beautiful people. This is all in Pacific time. This is how E3 released it. Because then, well, E3 is in California, so. Or no, it usually is. You could have, usually. You could have had a conver conversion. Okay. Could have. It's not just for me. It's for the European achievers and all that. I'd you love to read them all, but. Like, I can't. ESA is not going to. It's Saturday, June 12th. 10 a.m. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm skipping this. 11 a.m. Uh, I should read it. Sorry. 10 a.m. There's a broadcast pre-show. 11 a.m. There's a Ubisoft Forward pre-show. Then at 12 p.m. There's, of course, the Ubisoft Forward. Again, this is all in Pacific. Just a reminder, all in Pacific Standard Time. 2 p.m. is the Gearbox E3 Showcase. 2.45 Games Beat Session. Sunday, June 13th, starting at 8.45 a.m. There's a broadcast pre-show. 9.30 a.m. is 24 Entertainment's Naraka Blade Point. 10 a.m. is Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase. 12.15 p.m. is Square Enix. 2 p.m. is Warner Brothers Games Back for Blood. 2.30 p.m. PC Gaming Show. Who cares? Am I right? <laughs> 4 p.m. Future Game Show. Monday, June 14th. This is a long one. Get ready. 8 a.m. Broadcast Pre-Show. 9 a.m. Verizon. 9.45 a.m. Intellivision. 10.15 a.m. Take-Two Interactive Panel. 11.10 a.m., Mythical Games, 12 p.m., Indie Showcase, 12.30 p.m., Freedom Games, 1 p.m., Ven, 2.30 p.m., Capcom, 3 p.m., Razor. <sighs> Tuesday, June 15th, 8 a.m. is a broadcast pre-show, 9 a.m. is Nintendo's... <laughs> okay, this is literally what they wrote. Nintendo's Nintendo Direct and Nintendo Treehouse Live. Didn't need to put that. 2.45 uh, p.m. is the Bandai Napco Entertainment. Elden Ring, so all of you can shut up about it. There's okay. Elden Ring. Please, for the love of God, go watch it and try not to bother me about it. 3.20 p.m., Eureka Studios. 3.35 p.m., GameSpot Play for All Showcase. 4.45 p.m., Official E3 2021 Awards Show. You think we're going to see that weird-ass horror game? Um... Uh, scorn. I don't oh, know why. Jesus. I don't know why it came to my mind. I was like, just I about to say, so what happened to you that like, made like, that terrible game come into mind? And, well, and I mean terrible in a the reason because visual sense. The, I have I no idea if it's of, good or not. I was thinking of the Celesto Protocol, the Dead Space look like Callisto. Yeah, yeah. Is it Callisto or mm -hmm. Celesto? Oh, Callisto. Okay, you're right. Yeah, C A L I S T O. Yeah. What? Yeah. I was thinking of that, and I was like, what's the another horror game that was coming out? And I was like, oh, that's Scorn. And I was like, oh, yeah, we haven't heard of that either. Scorn. Scorn still looks so weird. Oh, God. Uh, what is this? Does this even have a date? I'm checking if that has a date real quick. What? Scorn. Oh. I'm guessing, I mean, I'm guessing not. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. about to look around, but there is no obvious date, so I have no idea. This is a gross game. This is like... Like, let's see if you're gonna barf game. Yeah, it just says to, yeah to to be determined. Yeah, that there's no release date. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it definitely looks fucking weird. All right, Alex. Hmm. The news for the week. We of course like to end on uh, how I started it. I did uh start this show very quickly because I wanted mm -hmm. to get into it. It was a beefy episode. Mm -hmm. As of recording, we're already at 118, so we have uh, we have a beefy show for you guys. I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, we did revamp our Patreon tiers and messaging, so make sure to check that out. Alex, I like to start this show like I usually begin it. I didn't this time, but I like to end it just like we always do with one question, and that question is directly to you. Alex, what you got queued up for the weekend could be of course a tv show a movie a video game anything this is a question for you two achievers what's queued up for your weekend i want to know you watch a castlevania you're playing a video game anything reading a book audiobook anything in between alex what you got queued i got a lot so they're playing apex of course mm -hmm. um tomorrow oh ratchet and clank oh we do not really tomorrow and, but uh, tomorrow well it is tomorrow it's june 10th Okay, all right. If you want to play that game, yeah, sure. Yeah. As achievers, I'll tell you what's shitty. Just pull. It's one one a.m. So he's like, "It's technically tomorrow." <laughs> Look, this episode is, is 
this episode started at the on the ninth. We're keeping it on the ninth. <laughs> and people are probably listening to her and damn they're recording at 1 a.m don't they sleep we wish mind you i have to export this and it takes fucking forever for sometimes i don't know why mm-hmm. if um, i had premiere i'd do it but alex has the premiere well i do normally it's fine last time it took forever even with my internet i don't know it was weird anyway uh ratchet and clank uh more apex Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. Yes, you surprised me with that. I didn't think you were going to get that, but you, you now, jumped on that quickly. No, the reason I want to play these is because I don't remember playing these because the Ninja Gaiden Sigmas are different from the ones that were on 360. So like Ninja, really? Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden 2 that uh-huh. we love yeah. is not Sigma 2, is which is what's on this collection. It's a whole different game. It is not say? the same. It is not the same game. When you say I whole, looked it up, when you say whole yeah, different, I looked I looked it up. It's not the same game. And think about Ninja Gaiden Sigma, and then remember Ninja Gaiden Black. Those are two different games. So, so you're telling me Ninja Gaiden Two is not in this collection? The different game. Really? Mm-hmm. Nin- yeah. Here. That doesn't Nin- sound right at all. I have to look it up for you now. Here. Yeah. Nin- Ninja Gaiden That's- Sigma Two. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden Sigma Two was a PS. It was a PlayStation exclusive. Oh. It was uh, it was on Vita. It looks like I can't tell what that is. Is it? Was that on the Vita? Yeah, and then on uh, PS3. And when I from what I looked, it does not like I don't see the similarity. Like I don't like I'm looking at all these cutscenes or images. And I got it doesn't I, look no, like... I I got you. Ninja Gaiden Two Sigma Two. Is the redefined PlayStation 3 version of Ninja Gaiden 2. It released September 29, 2009 in North America and October 1st, 2009 for uh, Asian territories. The teenager who developed the title was not designed by uh, Tonobu it- Itazaki. It- Itagaki. Thank you, Itagaki. Itagaki <clears throat> left Team Ninja after developing Ninja Gaiden 2. Yosoku Hayashi. Director of Ninja Gaiden Sigma produced and directed Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 as an upcoming re release. Sigma 2 will be available on Nintendo Switch June through this collection. Now, it could be similar, but there's a lot so, that is not the same. I was about to say, so it seems like it is the same game, but there's a lot of differences. It seems like there's some boss fights in this game I've never done. Yeah, we know our Ninja Gaiden 2. So. Yeah, I love that game. I like you know. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm wanting to play that, and for I think for games, I think uh, I think that's it. Now I want to watch Loki because that came out. Alex, what would I tell you if I just left from watching Loki episode one? How was it? First off, I'm gonna spoil the entire episode for you. Meteor crashes, kills everybody. Mm. Dinosaurs jo- came back. Joking aside, um, first off, it was super great. Um, mm-hmm. Disney Plus series for Marvel Cinematic Universe continues to not disappoint me. Anytime I turn on anything that they have their name on, I am enthralled in, in the entire way through. I loved uh, from the beginning to the end. Loki is one of my favorite characters actually in this franchise, and mm-hmm. it is just as nice picking up with Tom Hiddleston as it ever is. He is that same devilish ne'er-do-well guy that we all love and and i am so excited to see where this story takes him very excited this is very i don't want to spoil anything so i'm not going to but this is very Mm. very interesting things that they set up in the eve the literally the first episode the things they set up Mm. could have it says the big implications big tremendously important for the future of the mcu oh it is Literally, you will know. I'm not saying anything, Achievers. Go watch it. Mm. If you can, if not, if you have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you can get a free whatever. I'll be honest, I don't know. It's like free three months, I think. I don't remember. You get Disney Plus if you have Game Pass Ultimate. I know that. Mm. Wow, that's Go. crazy. It says the, this this series will impact the MCU more than any other shows have been so far. Oh, yeah. If, that's crazy. Achievers, go watch this. Me and Alex keep saying we're do spoiler cast for shows and we never do it this one i promise we will this is awesome i cannot wait to see where this goes literally the first episode alex Mm -hmm. is definitely that it is oh this is a big deal Mm -hmm. very big deal and i am so excited 
Interesting. You got anything cute? I think for ask counts. Um, Ratchet and Clank, more Destiny Two. I got the Vex Mythoclass. That was nice. Nice. nice yes, nice. yes, yes. I, I'm quite lucky. A, that was only my eighth ish run. There was so. a weapon ornament for that yesterday. I don't know if it's still up on the thing. It, it, it is. I can buy it for Bright Dust, but it's it's literally the gun, but like silver. Silver. It's like, yeah. It's I like I, I, I'm. I, I'd, I'd get a good. Want to have everything chrome? Like. <laughs> yeah. It was like this is the one you want to go with, Bungie. This one could have mm-hmm. made it cool. But, um. I think I say we watched Loki. I want to finish Castlevania season four and and say Salavi to that uh, series. Uh, so that's very close to my heart as well. I love that show. Um, that's it. Me and me and the wife finished Critical Role campaign two. That was kind of the majority of watch time. Now now we're going to force her to finish campaign one because she's still on that. She has like twenty ish episodes left. So we're gonna finish that as well. Then we'll completely be done with Critical Role, and then we, I, I guess I get on with my life. I don't really understand what happens after that. I, 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 I don't remember a time before Critical Role, and I, I don't want to go back to that. So Watch other shows? I don't, Alex, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> I think I'll just rewatch Critical Role again. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, you know I, knowing you, you would. If Alex, I I just want to tell the achievers what this is. So this is essentially a four hour D and D session that you watch, and is one of the most enthralling things I have ever seen in my entire life. Has I will say this again: a, a piece across the room yet? Alex, wait, what piece? What? Like, you just, like what? You made all that know. up? I don't know. Does anybody get mad enough to where they just like throw the board? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, they're all friends. I I don't think they do that. No, but but it's nice. It's very hilarious. It's Mm. it's guys so good. It's so good, and it sounds like nonsense because you're like you watch people do D and D, but like it really is that good. Like it 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 is. You should watch it, achievers. Now, is this like a? (laughs) It's not. I'm not gonna make that joke. Um. I think that's all I got, though. I, I don't have much, to be honest. Queued up. Um, I watched Bo Burnham's Inside, which is a fantastic Netflix stand-up special. It's one of the most... It's probably the best thing I've ever seen on Netflix, if I'm being perfectly honest. Like, it's so good. So good. It's just stupid how good it is to be... Mm-hmm. Like, it's just... It, it's really like dumb how good it is. Like it's I it's furious. Like it's like how do I how does this how is this so good? It's annoying how funny he can be. Alex, that's yeah, it's all for me. So if that's all for you, Alex, that, that means that we have to unfortunately tell the achievers goodbye for today. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, okay. All right, straight to it. All right, goodbye. Fuck you. No. Look. Uh, look. I'm tired. I am also tired. I I almost texted you and like, dude, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. But I got that, I got that achiever light in me where I was like, nah. See, we gotta we gotta give it to him. We gotta mm. give it to yeah, him. Yeah, I was feeling it because I was hyped up because I had, I had just played an Apex match and I had got a win and I was like, man, I'm feeling it. And you were like, yeah, hey, you me record? too. I was like, let's go. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Now and we got all worked up we're talking about PS4 and PS5. I was talking shit about everybody. Oh. This is great. It's great. So great. The game's gonna be worse, everyone. Love you. <laughs> just kidding. Now, remember, you can support us easily a couple ways. Free, you freeloaders. Don't worry, we are too. You give us a like, you comment, subscribe, share with a friend. If you want to support us on Patreon financially, of course, only do it if you can. You go over to patreon.com slash easy achievers. Give us a dollar or any tier that you see fit. That gives you ability to do a lot of things, early access to the shows and certain tiers. But if you want the most... Um, Simplest tier for literal pennies a day. You could support our little mom and pop thing we got going on here. One dollar, one dollar a month gets you access for Patreon DMing service and posts on Patreon. You can p- DM us Patreon question, comment, concern, thought, and or idea for the show. We read it aloud and we talk it out. You can ask us a question. You can make fun of us. You can say how wrong we are in certain things. And we will fucking roast the shit out of you. And it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really fun for us. Not so much you, though. Just kidding. On that note... Call Chief.